Good morning. My name is Norman Patterson, and I'm a Christian evangelist coming down here to Central Connecticut, preaching the Word of God, preaching from the Bible for anybody who would listen, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ. And you might wonder what would motivate a man to take his time to come to Central. Well, one motivation I have is I went here many years ago, graduated, I think, in 1984, majored in philosophy, preparing for a life in ministry. But that's not my main motivation by any means. My ma main motivation is to come and tell people about how you could be made right with God through Jesus Christ. How you doing, sir? How's it going? Good, good. Do you follow Christ? You are, you're a Christian. Wonderful. All right. Can you read what it says? Yeah, it's hard. My eyes aren't so good. Tell me. It says, I can do all things through Christ. That's right. God bless you. What's your name? Vic. Vic, nice to meet you. I'm Norman. Thank you. So my motivation is to come down here and tell people about about how they could be made right with God because God is real. You know, they try to tell you in the various classes that there is no God, but it says in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. When you look at the universe, how could you deny the reality that there's a God at the center of this universe? I mean, they used to estimate that there are more stars in the universe than there are sands, grains of sand in all the earth. But now the astronomers are saying there's more galaxies, and every galaxy has billions of stars. There's more galaxies in all of the world, in all the universe, than there are grains of sand in all the beaches in all the world, because it is God who has made them. And the heavens declare the glory of God. You could go over to the uh, Copernicus Hall right there, take a class in astronomy, not astrology, astronomy, and get a little bit of a glimpse into the massiveness of the universe. And the heavens declare the glory of God. And that's a beautiful thing. If you've ever taken a look at the Adronema, I can't even say it, galaxy, the Sombrero galaxy, all the various galaxies that there are, each one with billions and billions of stars, not to mention the Milky Way galaxy. These declare the glory of God. And that is declared all throughout creation. I mean, here we are, they tell you that there is no God and the universe is not proof of the existence of God. Well, you know, you have a building. How, they're building a building right now. How do you know that there are, are builders? Because there's the evidence of the building. Look at the evidence of this universe. The evidence of this universe is that there is a God at the center of this universe who has created it. They'll tell you no. They have no evidence or proof of it. They just make random, arbitrary claims that there is no God. But we know that there is a God, and every person knows in their heart of hearts that there is a God. Not just a God, but the one and only true God at the center of the universe. And the heavens declare the glory of God. But, you know, what also declares the glory of God is the fact that we are human beings. I mean, what creature on the face of the earth does the things that we do as human beings? We are incredible, incredible. I mean, our brains, you couldn't, they say that if you wanted to try to match the, the capacity of the, the human brain, you'd have to fill up a stadium with computers. And that won't even begin to, to do that. Was that? Won't even be able to start with it. You won't even. So do you, what do you believe? Do you believe in God? I used to. You used to? Why, why, why used to? You don't anymore. I was born a uh, practicing Catholic. Okay, well, that's a good thing to leave that. St. Thomas. Yeah. Went to St. Uh, went to uh, middle, uh, sorry. It's all right. Elementary middle school. Went to Northwest Catholic. No oh boy. Um, yeah, that, that, that'll take it out of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it turns out when you try to force it onto, like, yeah. rebellious teens, it doesn't work. Especially Catholicism, because it has so many weird things in it. So many rituals and yeah. dogma. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I'll be honest, I looked at all the others. I looked at yeah. Islam. Mm -hmm. I looked at Protestantism. Mm -hmm. I looked at Orthodoxy. I looked yeah. at everything. Well, so you're searching. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not searching as much anymore. Okay. Um, 
I mean, I'm not one of those who says I don't have time for it. Everybody's got time for it. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, everybody to make those choices. Yeah, yeah. Um, and even in Catholic school, I, I was kind of distancing, and they were cool with it. They were really, really okay. fine with it. They were accepting, which is you know something I love. But right now, I'm a Gnostic theist. I believe there's okay. something out there. Okay. I just don't personally claim to understand it. Okay. Everybody can make sense of what they believe, and everybody's mm -hmm. got that right. I just personally hey. don't. How you doing? Don't got it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you need prayer? Yeah. Uh, do you mind? Hold, I want to talk to you more. Oh, if you yeah, got a, a second, yeah. what would you like prayer for? My name is Norman. Hi. How are My you? My name is Seraphim Walker. I'm Seraphim. Uh, a Christian. Okay. And I've got a huge psych exam that I've been uh, trying to thoroughly prepare for. Okay. Um, and I've been kind of praying every step. I've got many people praying for me, and I okay. just would love to receive some more. All right. Let me pray. Have you done the work? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Father, I thank you for Seraphim, you said? Yes. Seraphim. I thank you for her. I ask, dear Lord, that you would bring back to her mind all that she has studied. I pray that she would be able to put it back onto the test that she needs. Help her not to be nervous, just to relax in you. It'll come back to her. But I also pray that you would give her the wisdom to be able to discern what they are saying in the psychology department from what is your truth and um, what is just falsity yes. of the world. And I, I know that we have to do that in order to pass our exams, but I do pray you give her greater wisdom, help her to walk in your ways and have your, not just the knowledge of the world, but your glorious wisdom that comes from your word. I just thank you for this, and I thank you that she knows where to go for wisdom, and that's to you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God thank bless you, you Seraphim. You as well. Good luck. So you're, you're, you're an agnostic theist. Gnostic. Agnostic oh, oh, okay. is... Okay. Um, oh, Gnostic. Oh, Gnosticism. Yeah. Okay. Agnostic would be... More, you don't know. I don't know and mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't believe. Okay. Gnostic is, I believe there's something out there. Okay. I just don't want to put a pin in anything. Okay. Like concrete in my mind. How would, you, how would you ever come to know whether what you believe is true or not or come to a conclusion? I don't think we can. Okay. Um, I believe every religion's got their evidence. Okay. Um, I'm a history major. Okay. I've cool. Civilizations all across the world. Yeah. Different cultures, um, and you know what I kind of sat down to settle in my mind is who's to say they're wrong, who's to say we're wrong. Mm, that's the question. I know. That is the you know you 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 obviously are bringing things down to the basis, yeah. and I'll tell you why I believe as a yeah. biblical. 100% believing in Jesus Christ, Sola Scriptura, the Bible alone. I mean, Catholicism gets into not just the Bible, but it gets into, you know, the magisterium and all the traditions and all that other stuff. So they add to the Bible. Every other religion does the same thing. But the Bible, the biblical Christianity is built upon the presupposition, right? The self-authenticating presupposition that the Bible is the Word of God. That I, it may sound like circular reasoning. Why do I believe that this is the Word of God? Because the Bible says it's the Word of God. <laughs> yeah. But ultimate presuppositions must be self-authenticating. Yeah. Because if, there is an, if there's something outside of the Bible that authenticates it, that makes that the higher authority. So as a, a Reformed Biblical Christian, I start with what the Bible says of itself, that it is the, the w Word of God. Now, if you take the Christian worldview, you're saying that you're agnostic, Theists, mm -hmm. you just don't know. I, from a Christian worldview, starting with only the Bible, I can tell you there's a God at the center of the universe, what He's like, what He requires of us, mm -hmm. um, what uh, you are, who you are, you know, how, where you're going to spend eternity, and all those. And I even say this further if you get rid of this book, all you have is just human opinion. Mm -hmm. Atheists, tr chance random processes, and all the rest of the stuff. You are left with, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I am left with, I do know. In fact, if you reject this book that, that has the answers, I have the answers. If you reject the God of the Bible, you cannot prove anything, which is what you're, the state that you're in. You can't prove anything. You have no epistemology in order to determine whether something is right or wrong. You're absolutely right. So, you know, that, that leaves you in a very serious state because because all you will ever do is just in, 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 uh, in insecurity and not being sure. I am absolutely sure, absolutely, I would die for it. Put a gun to my head right now and say, deny Jesus Christ, pull the trigger, man, because you're only helping me out because I'm gonna go to be with him. <laughs> I believe you. And I if you die, 
I mean, the Bible, the Bible is absolute truth. You as an agnostic, you're not going to stand before God someday and say, you know, you didn't give me enough evidence. Oh, yeah. I know. That won't fly. That it won't fly. No, it won't at all. And the, the law of God, I mean, the law of God and the Ten Commandments, you know, have you ever taken God's name in vain? Probably. Yeah. Have you ever lusted? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever stolen? Nope. I haven't done that. Okay. You ever lied? Oh, yeah. Okay. Dishonor your mom and dad in different ways growing up? Okay. So you've broken various forms yeah. of the commandment. I've, so, done, I've uh, gotten my forgiveness from priests when I was a practicing. Yeah, but the priest can't give you the, the forgiveness. And that's the, that's the lie of Roman Catholicism. The Bible says that there's only one mediator between us and God, and that is Jesus Christ, who is fully God and fully man. The biblical message is, here's the question, how do you get rid of, you feel guilty for different things. Every person here, they try to suppress it, they try to ignore it, they try to drink it away and you know have sex and so they don't feel anything, but all it does is exacerbate it. Mm. So what? How, how do you get rid of your sin? How do you get rid of your guilt? You gotta pray up. Ultimately speaking, what biblical Christianity says is that one God, yeah. three persons, Jesus Christ came into this world, lived the perfect life as God and man, and when he went to the cross as an innocent man, God the Father, who is just, must, must punish sin. I mean, could you imagine a court system that says, we don't care, we're just going to let all these thieves go and these yeah. murderers go? So sin must be punished. But biblical Christianity says that Jesus Christ, you got a little bit of this in Catholicism. Jesus Christ was punished on your behalf. Yeah. So that if you believe in Jesus Christ and trust in him, God will forgive you. Not because of you, but because he punished Christ on my behalf, not not yeah, on your behalf, unless you believe. So you understand to a certain degree, but you're you're stuck in Gnosticism. You don't know. Yeah. You're stuck in. You can never get rid of your guilt. You can never be able to make any kind of truth claims of what's right and what's wrong. I mean, how do you know what's right behavior and what's wrong behavior? I believe that as long as the end of the day, your actions don't harm anyone, mm -hmm. and you've had a positive impact on someone's day, whatever course you're on is. Doing okay. Do you I mean, see? Do you see how you're, you've assumed biblical truth there? You've talked about uh, what, what are some of the words that like good? Yeah. Um, you know, not hurting anybody as if that somehow is a bad necessarily a bad thing. You have assumed the Christian worldview because you, as an agnostic, you are, you are not a gnostic. That's what I'm submitting to you. Mm. You're not a gnostic because you're talking about categories of good and evil, and you're claiming that you know what is good and what's evil. Every religion and every belief, I would say, has assumptions of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Some differ. Yep. You're back again. I am. How yeah, you I've doing? Been, I've been seeing you so many times. Yeah, yeah. You want, you want to pray for all of us? Pray that we all do good on our midterm. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah. Out, it's on yeah. everybody's mind. Starting. Yeah. 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 I really thought I had a mid, the mid, uh, my math and my computer midterm on the same day. Thank God. It, it don't, yep, it, they're, separate. they're not. Well, my that's math good. One's on, it's on, my math one is on Friday and my computer is on Wednesday. That give me time to breathe. I'm the only one I'm really. I'm just. I'm just nervous about the math one because there's a lot of formulas now. Cause we're. Cause we're in geometry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me pray for you, Lord. I pray for my sister. You would give her the wisdom and the strength and recall everything that she studied during the semester. And I pray that um, she would be able to pass her classes and to most of all know you. And to follow Jesus Christ every day I, in her life. Yeah, I'm yeah, Amen. I got baptized in 2019. Wonderful, wonderful. Yep, God bless it. you. Yeah, God saved one, God saved me, my preteens. Yeah, yeah. yeah wonderful. But it took me longer to get baptized only, only because of fear. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that's holding me back. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like the one time I have. If I, I don't want to keep you if you need no, to go. I don't have anything on that. Yeah, that's, yeah. So, that's so. What, that's, what, that's what this world is doing. It's all in fear. That must yeah. change. Yeah. And, and unless we do that, then nothing's going to change. Yep, that's right. So that's why I'm here. You, you pray for that. Yeah, I will. Can I? Yeah, help yourself to whatever you want. Those are good. Yeah, this is a good good little pamphlet, too, yeah. for you. I mean, life okay. ultimate question. Okay. So, you know, you yeah. all other religions do have an assumption of what's right and what's wrong, but where does it come from? The danger of, because really, you, what you're talking about in Gnosticism is subjectivity. Yeah. You are the determiner of what's right or what's wrong. Yeah. Carry that out on all of society. Carry that out to a dictator like oh, yeah, Joseph Stalin. They'll and, always say, well, what I'm doing is good and what I'm doing is bad. And then they got the gun, which means might makes right. Yeah. So your philosophy can lead to Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler. I think it's a bit of a stretch. But Why yeah. not? 
Well, mine, the way I phrased it was. Like, no, 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 a no. Lot of my I'm not talking about you personally, Gnosticism but if, if, if we take Gnosticism as a whole and we put it, I mean, Adolf Hitler was a Gnostic and so, yeah. does, so was Joseph Stalin. And I'm trying to bring you to the logical conclusion that, for like Friedrich Nietzsche, mm. God is dead. Adolf Hitler takes that God is dead, the Superman that Friedrich Nietzsche talked about, right? Ultimately, mm. it's the Aryans and the Jews are lesser. Uh, we got a further um, evolution, so we're going to kill the inferior. A lot of my personal good and wrong views come from, I was raised, like I said, I was raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, I dropped the dogma, but I took the right and the wrong out of it. Like, How do you know what's right and what's wrong? It's the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> it, it pushed me in the direction that I know. Yeah. So, what I took from Jesus, how I personally see him, is I don't know, I don't mm -hmm. want to know, mm -hmm. and I don't want to claim to know if he was truly God, if he was just a really smart man, mm -hmm. or what, and I'm not trying to diminish him. No, 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 I get it, get it. And I took what he said, and I agree with it all. I yep. agree I agree with almost everything in the Bible. Yep. I can't say I agree 100%, sure. but I agree with the Bible and a lot of its core principles, values, and messages. Mm -hmm. They're really great for Western society. Mm -hmm. They're really great for raising your kids. I want to push my kids through Catholic school when I grow up and I have... How would you do that to them? Put well, I, <laughs> It's I messed you up. Specifically the, one, <laughs> specifically the one I went to, though, because they were great for prepping me for college okay. and instilling great virtues. Okay. And the Catholic schools I went to, they never forced Catholic views onto anyone. Mm -hmm. When I told them I didn't want to go to confession, mm -hmm. when I was like, still trying to figure out what I was, they were fine. Mm -hmm. They said, you don't have to receive communion, okay. um, but we're still going to teach you. Mm -hmm. And they taught us history, and they said, this is Catholic history, this mm -hmm. is Protestant history. Mm -hmm. They tried not to muddle it as much as they could. Mm -hmm. um, of course, obviously, there's some bias. Of course, I, yeah, yeah. The teachers were all Catholic. Everybody was, I know there's And I, I respect somebody. I mean, I'm absolutely biased. Yeah. Uh, the Bible is only the Bible. Reformation, Martin Luther, John Calvin. Yeah. Because they, not because I worship them, but they said the Bible only. What do you do with C.S. Lewis's argument that says when you really look at and examine the, the words of Jesus Christ, he claimed to be God? Yeah. If I were sitting there saying, hey, brother, I'm God. Like, right? I could do, I could walk on water. I could do all that other stuff. You'd say, that guy's a little bit crazy, yeah, yeah. right? Like, so Jesus is either, either he's crazy or he's a liar. He's, he's lying to everybody. How you doing? Hi. How are you? Do you want me to pray for you? Do you mind just waiting a second? He's a liar, lunatic, or what he says is really true. Yeah. So that, that to, to, I remember being in the classes where Jesus was a good man. Jesus was not, according to the world standards, a good man because he claimed to be God. So you have to either dismiss him as an immoral man who's a liar or dismiss him as a lunatic or fall at his feet and worship him as the one that died in your place and sins. I have, a, I have a way we can go for that, but... Yeah, I yeah. How are you doing? Hi. How are you? My name's Norman. Crystal. Crystal, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What can I do for you? Pray for me. Okay, what would you like prayer for? Um, it's just something I don't want to do, but it just... In okay. In God knows. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, Crystal. Father, um, you know the secrets of our hearts. You know every thought that has left a shadow on our minds and you do not forget anything. And you know us in absolute detail and you know what's going on in her life in absolute detail. And I ask, Father, you would give her, first of all, wisdom according to the Bible, not according to her own strength, not according to the world, that she would know and look at what the scripture says about what's right and what's wrong. Second of all, I also pray you would convict her of any sin that's in her life. If she's in, engaged in something that is not of you, I ask, Lord, that you would convict her heart. And third, I pray that she would come to forgiveness in Jesus Christ and that she would find relief for the guilt of her soul, the shame of her soul, the struggles that are going on in her life. Maybe it's financial. I don't know, Lord, you do. But I thank you, Lord, that she knows to look to you and to ask me to pray, but she's ultimately looking to you. And I pray that um, she would find the answers that she's looking for. I just thank you for her and the privilege to be able to pray for her. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Crystal. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're, You're very welcome. welcome. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I lost it. <laughs> oh, no. Jesus, liar, lunatic, or... Yes. Um, this, I, I don't mean to insult you. No, don't, you uh, insult me all the way. It, we're talking... See, philosophy major, that's what I was here. We attack arguments, not people. Yeah. Right? Okay. So you're not insulting me. Well, if I'm going to insult you, my name's Sam. My name's Norman. <laughs> nice to yeah. meet you. Yeah. Um, as a historian, I read 
a lot of documents mm -hmm. and a lot of primary sources. Mm -hmm. um, and I, every time I write, I had to grapple with this for a while. My professors keep telling me, you got to take your emotion and your views out of what you're writing. Okay. Because it's impossible, but yeah, they, 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 they said that they said yep. it's you're always gonna have some bias when you write. Yep. Like I wrote last semester, I wrote a 15 page paper on the Black Panthers. Mm. I don't even like them. Mm -hmm. I, historically, I think they're they mess up a lot, but I had to take that out. Yep, I had to take that out. Okay, try. Yep, um, and I kind of come to terms that I don't think every document, every document has some source of bias. And some validity to it. Mm -hmm. The Bible has validity. Mm -hmm. It is a document that's been passed. Valid is. What's the standard of validity that you're My using? My validity is. It's, it's kind of hard. I try to put a percentage on it, but it's impossible to do. Okay. Um, my problem is the Bible has been reprinted. Okay. Uh, it has been translated. It's an ancient text from the Middle East. Or I mean, it's been passed around. The names in there have been Westernized, like Peter. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, we have translations, yeah. so sure, sure. Yeah. Um, my concern with the Bible, and I never write this off to just throw the Bible at the window. Mm -hmm. I hate mm -hmm. people who say that. No, you're a thinker. That's cool. It's, I'm following you. What could have been written for someone else's agenda? Mm -hmm. And that's always something that's been concerning me, but I hate the people who say that and they just go throw the whole thing out. Like, Yeah, yeah, I get it. Like, I get it. Have you ever read the Bible? Yeah. From cover to cover? I mean, yeah. not, not that you have to read it, I don't, but you, I don't, you've read enough of I've it. I've read enough of okay, it. Okay, good. I don't... Because I can't stand when people like, the Bible's a piece of crap. It's like, you ever read it? No. It's like, well, go, go somewhere I've else. read that thing back to forth. I don't yeah. remember all yeah, of yeah, it. Fair. I, if you like try to ask me to quote something, I, mm -hmm. it's been years. Mm -hmm. But I've read it, but I've never read it as a historical document. Mm. I need to sit down and do that one. Yeah? Day. Like, I need to get... I, I, I believe get, it is a historical document. Yeah. I do. Like, when it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. God was there, so he's writing about what it is that yeah, he did it, and he I mean, saw. it is a history. Yep. It's, it's an anthology. No. Yep. It's... A, yeah, there's poetry in it, yeah. It's one of the most beautiful texts ever written, reprinted, rewritten. It's one of the biggest texts Isn't ever written. Isn't the truth? Yeah. Most yeah. people don't realize, like, the Bible, I preached this the other day, the Bible has had more influence on, on the world than any uh, other book. Like Western yeah. society can yep. trace a lot of its laws yep. and how we guide ourselves That's right. to the Bible. Yep. Um, just a few years ago, China said they wanted to rewrite the Quran to uh, morally accurate mm -hmm. socialist values. I mean, I don't care too much personally about socialism, but that is an affront yeah. to all the, Liberation theology does the same thing to the Bible. They, they, they interpret it through Marxist the, f philosophy. My thing is there's some issues in the Bible mm -hmm. that I think they need to stay there. Okay. Whatever the problems are, mm -hmm. I think they need to stay there for us to be able to challenge mm -hmm. and for us to stand by. But see, I, I follow your argument. Yeah. The difference is you st or mankind, we'll just say that, yeah. you, or you, you know. Yeah. Again, I'm not going to try to insult you. You stand in judgment of this book. Yeah. So you're the one that's like standing on the throne and this is the book on the dock, which means the, on trial. Yeah. And I would say the opposite. This book is the judge. I mean, the, oh, the, the expression of the judge in is judging you. Mm -hmm. So, and I would say as far as the historical her, historicity, there is no historical document. And I challenge you to, to, to look this up that has more historical evidence of the validity of what this scripture says. Mm -hmm. Qumran, the Dead Sea Scrolls prove this. There are thousands of New Testament manuscripts so that we can lay it out and we can see it says this, says this, says this, says this. Oh, it's, there's a variation here. That's wrong. Yeah. So that we can actually recreate what the original manuscripts were. Yeah. And that's why I believe that the Bible, I don't care about being translated to different languages. Mm -hmm. I just care as long as it's being reprinted, it's accurate to mm -hmm. the original. Yeah. Um, I, think, I agree. Like I said, if we're going to stand by it, mm -hmm. you have to be prepared to stand by its worst and its best. Yep. As, um, as, I, as I am. Yeah. And yep. a fucking admirable man. So. Yep. Yeah, that's right. I guess really like that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would say to you that you take this book out of here, even though there are other religious books, they self-contradict. Yeah. This book is the only self-authenticating book that there is. This book needs no other higher authority to determine. That's why I'm not an evidentialist. Mm. In Christian apologetics, defending the faith, 
you'll find most people, well, the Bible, we can, I, I did a little apologetics with well, the manuscripts and so forth, and look at the building, there's a building there, so there must be a God. Mine is presuppositionalism. It's the, the Bible provides the preconditions for intelligibility. When you get rid of this book, you cannot prove anything. The ultimate proof of biblical Christianity for me is that, is the, is the impossibility of the contrary. Get rid of the Bible, you can't prove anything. Even proof itself is destroyed. Yeah, I mean, I believe, that, like I said, the Bible is almost... Do you powerful. follow the argument? I do. Okay. I do. The Bible supports itself. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard for me to say that because from an academic and scholastic standpoint, it's... Uh, Something can't support itself. In an well, argument, you, but this is. I oh, but you, do, do you understand that this whole this whole university is built upon that? When I was in philosophy, I'll give you an example. We were studying analytical philosophy. Professor says, uh, A. J. Eyre, analytical philosophy is built upon this belief that truth is only that which you can empirically verify. Mm. Let that set for a second. So I raise my hand and say, Can you empirically verify the truth of that statement? You can't. It's self-defeating. Yeah. Another class in sociology, there are no absolutes. Is that an absolute statement? Do you see how? And how do you know that reason is reasonable? By reason? By reason. How do you know that science is true? By science? Science can't determine science. truth. Science determines science. That's all it can. So they are all self-defeating. But this is a self-authenticating book. Mm. So that every, the humanism that's here in, in at Central, I mean, it's absolutely self-defeating. So you're saying that we use academics? Well, what verifies academia? Well, well I meant more from my field. Mm. My field be, is not self-supporting, it's self-criticizing. Yeah. Um, so that's my field. I understand the other, like a lot of fields are self-supporting. But you also have a Christian assumption. Yes. That the past exists. Absolutely. How do you know? Because we're Christian. And yeah. <laughs> Otherwise you don't know. You, as a Gnostic, you would have to say all that exists is the moment and the past is, we don't even know whether, like David Hume, who is a, a British philosopher, atheist, said there's no, there's no, as an atheist, there's no way to determine the uniformity of nature. What that means is a billiard ball, ball gets hit on a pool table and it just scatter all the rest of the balls, that there's no way to know that there's an actual connection between all those things. We assume it as an atheist because atheism is built upon chance random processes. Yeah. But biblical Christianity says there's cause and effect because of God. I, I could, I tried it. When I was still struggling, I thought I was an atheist. Mm. And then what I realized is I don't believe in absolute ideology like that. Is that an absolute statement? I just That's caught the problem. you in it. I know, there's the problem there. Yeah. So this is why I'm talking with you because I'm still trying to develop my own views. Yeah. Which is like, again, it's a self-destructing opinion that I have. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I lean more towards Gnostic theism, I guess sort of, because I don't want to close the door on anything. Mm -hmm. um, I have a friend who believes in the Roman gods, mm -hmm. and I asked her, I was like, are you serious? Because I thought that was a little absurd, and she went, yeah. And I went, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, power to you. Mm -hmm. One of the oldest religions in the world, Zoroastrianism, mm -hmm. is still active. Mm -hmm. And what I told myself, and what I've come to accept is, I'm never going to write someone else's religion off. Mm -hmm. I can never do that. Mm -hmm. I can't. Um, out of respect for them and out of respect for all religions. If I write one off, I feel like I'm disrespecting a lot of them. Yeah, and I'm in the opposite position because yeah. I hold into the book, the Bible says the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me, which yeah. excludes everything and everybody. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but by me. So I... Actually, all those other religions are intolerant because as a biblical Christian, everybody who says we tolerate all, as you are kind of saying, I tolerate all religions. What about the exclusivity of the intolerance of biblical Christianity? How do you feel that fit that into your yeah. tolerance? And that's another reason why I could not be a Christian today is because I just disagree with that first commandment. Mm. And I can't be a practicing Christian if I disagree with even one of them. Mm -hmm. I can't nitpick. Mm -hmm. I can't pick and choose what I want to believe in from Christianity. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to form my own sect, and I just mm -hmm. don't, that's not it. But I, I'm going I'm to be a little tough on you. I think that you are obeying that, and, but ultimately you're your own God, and you're, you're the only determiner of what's right and what's wrong. You're the one that's sitting in the judgment seat of going through life, kind of like, you know, trying to determine and figure out everything else, but you are on the throne of your own religion. Oh, yeah. I mean, as of right now, I'm the center of my own ideology. Mm because I haven't given myself to my ideology. Yeah. So, 
but the biblical Christian, and this is, this is why I'm out here, because you go to most churches, Catholic churches, Protestant churches, they've turned into businesses. They're, oh. all, they're, they're all about, you know, very subtly, and I did it, so I know. You know, you start catering to the people and you make a program and pass the plate. And so we uh, preach because I'm afraid if I say that, Joe's not going to give his $500 a yeah, week and all that other stuff. Basket. Yeah. No, but now, no way, man. I, I care enough about people like to come here and say, and I'll say this to you. You don't repent of your sins. You die. You're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. You have, and, and, and you will even be worse because... You have enough understanding. I could see it in your eyes and just from what you're saying. You're, you're smarter than 99.99. .99. I'm not trying to compliment you based on that, but you get it, which makes you even more accountable. I know, it's, more, it's a conscious sin. Yeah. It is a conscious sin. I'm aware of my conscious sin. It's just sin. It's a sin, and I'm making my choice. So it's not just, and, and I would hope that you will make your choice of an eternal decision that will benefit you for all time and all eternity, not just then, but also now, so that you can be clear, not a, not a dogmatic ass, but a person that is confident, knows what he believes, therefore has the guidance of what's right and what's wrong in his life, and, and you could actually offer somebody, as I'm trying to do with you, you know, I'm just a beggar trying to show another beggar where you could find bread, and Jesus said he's the bread of life. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I gotta go into class, but you're doing something really good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Of course, no problem. God bless you. Hey, you too. If I if I were to choose a religion tomorrow, if someone put a gun to my head and said choose a religion, I would offer my soul up to Jesus mm. because it's how I was raised and it's the it's the religion ideology my morals most mm. aligned with. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not I wouldn't do it just because they have a gun to my head. No, I understand. You get, you get what I, I do. I get what you're saying. I would offer. So maybe in the future. I'll come back to you know what you're assuming you have a future once you die the bible says in hebrews first comes death and the judgment and am i using the scare tax a little bit yeah i mean right, right up front no, you don't I know am. i mean you could walk here somebody blow your brain out or you could just yeah. you're you're done for all eternity so the bible this is the way the christianity is often presented in most of the churches please come to jesus yeah. the bible says no brother you god commands you to come to Jesus Christ and you will be held accountable before the one and only true holy God based upon who you are and what you have decided about that and so I would encourage you like start stop screwing around and get right with God if I were to convert it wouldn't be out of fear of going mm. to hell yeah 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 I'm with you it would be out of love yes for the religion so oh, I understand the fear tactic I understand it um, but I I don't think I'd be fully mentally, emotionally, and physically aligned mm. if I were doing it just because I don't want to go to hell. No, I agree. I agree. I, it would have to be something that I, I want and I desire for not just me, but my loved ones as well. Let, let me lay this on you. As a Reformed, Christ, Biblical Christian holding to what the Bible says, the Bible says that people are born physically alive and spiritually dead. The Bible says in um, Ephesians chapter 2, you are dead in your trespasses and your sins. So I would submit to you, Biblically speaking, you do not have the ability to find God. It is God that is seeking you out, and it will be the... If you come to Christ, it's because of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Divine election. That's what John Calvin brought out of what the Bible says. The word election is in there. So it's... It, you, do you have a choice? Absolutely. Yeah. But is it God ultimately? Jesus says you must be born again. But this is not man's decision, he says in John 3. It is the Spirit of God that will awaken your heart. Ezekiel chapter 36 says the Spirit of God has to take away your heart of stone. You have a heart of stone. It's dead towards God. And unless the Spirit of God comes and takes away your heart of stone and gives you a heart of flesh, you can't respond to God. But faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God, and that's why I'm here. I have confidence and peace. I'm not Arminianism and Calvinism. Are you familiar with the two fra frames? Arminian is we we can choose. Biblical Calvinism says you can't choose, but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as I proclaim the word of God, the Spirit of God will do that upon His sheep. My sheep hear my voice, is what Jesus said. I think you may be. I really do. I'm not saying that to compliment you, but the fact that you're hearing. And there's a there's a level of understanding, you know. It may be that the Holy Spirit has already done a work in your life, and you actually are a Christian, and you just haven't come to the understanding. And and God the Father is just going to keep after you until you finally say, "I screwed up enough. I've I've had enough." Well, and on that day, 
Remember these words in my, our conversation. I'm a believer that God is a loving God, a yes. merciful God, and a forgiving God. Absolutely. Through Jesus, though. I know. And I hope that one day, if I do go back, if I do return to the faith, yeah. I know he'll welcome me with open arms. Yes, he will. Absolutely. I know. I know Prodigal son, father. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. He, uh, I know if I were to go choose another faith, there would be disappointment. Mm. I know. I know God would still love me, but he'd be disappointed. Yep. Um, I'm one of God's creations. I know he would yeah. love me no matter what. But yeah. Absolutely. Sinners get, sinners get punished. I, would, I believe that. Yeah. I mean, go. If I could leave you with one thing, sola scriptura is why the the Protestant, a protestant is a person that protests yeah. the Roman Catholic Church that has become so warped and twisted, which That's you know all from. about. And we believe the Bible alone. That's it, man. And if anybody says anything in any religion, any faith, or whatever, even in, even in Reformed Christianity that's not in line with this, I say, nope. No, it's not here. It's not what the Bible says. So I encourage you to match everything. Don't let you be the only standard. Let something outside yeah. of you, the objective revelation. Tell me your name again. Samuel. Samuel, do you mind if I pray for you, Samuel? I encourage, I was gonna ask you okay. to. Father, I thank you for Samuel. Um, and just as Jesus said about that man, I can't remember exactly where it is. Uh, he was not far from the kingdom of heaven. I believe this man is not far from the kingdom of heaven. I pray that he would look into his namesake that he was named after in the Bible, that godly prophet. I ask Holy Spirit that you would open his heart and his mind. We can, I can only knock, but if there's a, there's a stone heart, there's nothing more I could say or do. I pray you would give him a heart of flesh even now as I pray for him and reveal the truth to him that has already been revealed in the Bible, not some sort of subjective Gnosticism but the objective light um, that you've given us in your word. I just thank you for him. And I, I pray that um, in the future, if I could be of use or help to him, I pray that you would give me that honor and privilege. And thank you for the conversation we had today. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. My name is Norman Patterson. I got, you know, YouTube. Well, this is recorded, the conversation. I'm gonna probably post it because this is such an insightful That's conversation. Right yeah, yeah. Are you okay with that? It's fine by cool. me. But, you know, Norman Patterson, look me up and, um, you know, if you ever want to get in contact with me, I'll be back here. I'll be glad to sit down more. You're very, it's a very enjoyable to talk with you. My girlfriend's told me all about it. She's like, oh, there's a guy back on campus with a big hat talking about God. Yeah. And I saw you and I was like, oh, there he is. Yeah, I've cool. heard so much about this guy. Yeah. I got to get over here. Yeah, cool. Well, really, yeah. God bless you. Here. Really yeah. very much there. You too, Samuel. I'll see you around. All right. Also, I'm glad you're right to next to me. Yeah, absolutely. Remember Catholic parents. Yeah, that's right. My son is named Josiah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So I'm out here talking and people and praying for people and trying to show you the way that you could be made right with God, which really ultimately speaking is on everybody's mind. Some people say and try to deny the existence of God and they say, well, I don't have to be right with somebody that does not exist. And so they stand in judgment of God, but God does exist. We all know that. The Bible says that people suppress the knowledge of God in unrighteousness. In other words, what it says in Romans chapter 1 is that people want to deny the existence of God because they want to do whatever it is that they want to do. People want to continue on in their life and continue on in sin. But you know, you've, you've sinned enough in your life to know there's no satisfaction in it. Initially there might be, but over time as you continue on, eventually what happens is people drink it on Thursday nights, they become alcoholics. People taking recreational drugs eventually become drug addicts. People that just kind of dabble in porn, eventually they become porn addicts and they, they can't even function in a healthy, normal relationship. No, sin, sin is not going to get you anywhere. And that's the lie, that's the lie of Satan, is that, you know, you just go ahead and sin, you'll have a good time. But you know, you've already woken up with a hangover, you've all, you've all woken up after a night of doing something you know you shouldn't have done, and you feel awful. And the reason is, is because you're made in the image of God. And the reason you feel guilty and you feel bad is because God loves you and God cares enough about you. And even your very bodies testify to the reality that the God of the Bible exists. That's why lie detectors work. Did you know that? Lie detectors work because your very body is built in such a way that when you lie, you have a physiological response that you cannot, I mean, some people can eventually work on it, 
but you can't control it. Because you know, that it says in the Bible, the law of God is written upon our hearts. So you know, you have a sense of what's right and what's wrong just through the, the general revelation that God has given us in our very beings and in, in society. I mean, society is also built upon the reality that there is such thing as law. In other words, you can't just go out there and murder somebody. If you do, you'll be brought before the court and you'll, if you are guilty, you will be sentenced to prison. So we have the sense of right and wrong within us and that is, I, I would say, submit to you that that is an evidence that there is a God at the center of the universe and that you are created in the image of God. You are created in the image of God and so therefore when you go about your life and go about your day, when you indulge in things that you know you should not indulge in, you feel bad about it. You walk around with shame or you judge other people. Why do you judge other people? You judge other people because you have a sense of what's right and what's wrong. And that's just general revelation. But the Bible, the Bible ultimately tells us the standard of what is right and what's wrong. It's not a subjective feeling of what's right and what's wrong because people get messed up in their compasses about what's right and what's wrong. And so we get screwed up and the Bible says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And that's what ultimately happens to humanity is that we start thinking that things that God says are bad, that they're good, and things that God says are good are somehow bad. But we find that our lives are dead ends. Eventually our lives, if you continue on in your life, you will reach a dead end. It may already have happened or it, may, it will happen in your life. You will eventually hit a dead end. I'm 61 years old and believe me, I've hit the wall a couple of times. You will too. You will too. You could laugh all you want, but someday you will. You will. And some night when you wake up and your life is devastated, I hope that you will turn to God through Jesus Christ rather than be a fool. Rather than be a fool that says that there is no God because the Bible says the fool says in his heart that there is no God. It's only a fool that says there is no God. And the God that is is the God that has created the universe and that's why it says in uh, Psalm chapter 19 the heavens declare the glory of God just the fact that you're walking is an absolute miracle did you know that walking is just a series of falling forward and catching yourself the balance that you have if you've ever had vertigo you understand just how delicate the ability to balance is and that ability has been given to you by God that your being even your very body has been made in the image of God. But you see, the Bible tells us more than that. The Bible tells us of how we could be made right with Him. The Bible tells us how we can get rid of our sin, how we could get rid of our guilt, how we could get rid of our shame, those things that you would be so ashamed if your mom and dad knew that you've done, those things that you know that you shouldn't have done if your grandma or grandpa found out, you'd be so sad. And if, if, um, if they were put out there for everybody to see. You see, the blood of Christ, the death of Christ, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who was fully God and fully man, the promise of biblical Christianity is that God will take away, will wash away, will proclaim you not guilty. That is the only way that you could get rid of your sin. Here in psychology, you know, Sigmund Freud tried to get rid of guilt by just telling people that you feel guilt because of your dad or some sort of unconscious, subjective feelings. But you see, the feelings of guilt that we have are also based in the reality of objective truth. Like in the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments is the standard by which we can determine whether we have broken God's law or not. It is an objective reality, it's not just a subjective feeling. And there are people that often go through life just feeling bad about themselves. They just feel guilty about everything. I mean, there, there is a place for proper healthy guilt. You do something wrong, according to the Bible, and you feel bad about it, that's a good healthy thing. You are a normal, psychologically healthy person if you feel guilty about the bad things, the sinful things that you do. 
but there are also people that walk around feeling bad about anything. They feel bad about their bodies, and so they become bulimic. They feel guilty about every last scrap of food that they eat. They just walk around in guilt and shame. You see, biblical Christianity defines what's right and what's wrong according to the standard of God himself that he's revealed in the Ten Commandments. And the purpose of the Ten Commandments, ultimately speaking, the actual purpose of the Ten Commandments, I mean, there are many reasons that God has given us the Ten Commandments, but one of the reasons is so that you will understand what is right and what's wrong, and what's sinful and what's not sinful. You'll understand what true guilt is and what false guilt is because there is such thing as false guilt. But once you feel guilty about something, what do you do with your guilt? That's the question. What do you do with your guilt? How do you get rid of your guilt? I submit to you. How you doing, sir? Good. The only way you can get rid of your guilt is by going to God through Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ became guilty. Even though he was innocent, Jesus became guilty for guilty sinners. And what that means is that Jesus Christ went to the cross who was completely innocent and he took upon himself the guilt of guilty sinners. And that's why it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, and he who knew no sin became sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God. How are you doing? Good, good. My name is Norman. I saw you listen the other day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, like, I like what you're saying. Yeah, wonderful. Are you a Christian? Do you follow Jesus Christ? Yeah. Believe in him? I believe in him. You are a Christian. I know he died and raised for my sin. My sin. Amen. And you trust in him alone for your salvation. I went and got here if I did. Amen. He Amen. first, you know, every yeah. day I, my father's a preacher. Oh wow. Yeah, uh, but he, he passed a couple of years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I um I always wanted to go to uh, to be a minister and stuff like that. I see what happens with me. I got I decided to just go and get like an education. And stuff. Okay. But I'm really uh a uh, little bit in, 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 in the Bible. Wonderful. I, yep. I don't know two and two, but I, I know a lot of it. But you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and yeah. your Savior. Yeah. What's your name? Nick Oliver. Nick, I'm Norman Patterson. Nice it's a pleasure to and, meet and you. And I know he died for my sins. I know. Amen. Amen. I know he did. Yeah, so you're a student here? Yes, sir. What's your major in? Uh, psychology. Oh, no kidding. Good for you. I uh, graduate next year. Okay, wow. Congratulations. What do you hope to do with it? Well, just go back into my uh, community and try to give the, the best help I could to yeah. what you call the lost sheep. Yes, yes. Yeah. And give them the gospel, oh, too. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. You know what? My friends don't like to see me coming because that's all I preach, right? <laughs> <laughs> good for you. They always say, you always coming with it. Yeah, but I want you to know how good he is. Yeah, that's right. That's right. What do you do for us every day? Get yeah. all up, breathe, make sure we can... Healthy walk around and yeah. and, and, and just give got give him a thing. That's right. And, and that's what I tell him. Tell my my uh, my, uh, my friend. Tell mm -hmm. my friend. Mm -hmm. You know what you should do? Pick up the cross and follow him. That's right. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Be like me. Pick that cross up. That's right. Yeah. And follow him. Yeah. I don't care what you do, but grab that garment down there. That's if right. you can't hold on to nothing, get a piece of his garment. Yeah. Yeah. They don't like me, right? But they they know that I'm 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 trying to save them and tell them the, the righteous way of life. What what uh, church was your father in? He was um, I don't know if you ever hear uh, the House of Prayer. I think so in Hartford. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Um. It it is uh, Bishop. Madison. Okay. From out of Washington. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you ever been there. We got two big lines in front of that. Yeah, I do. I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. That, that's where I go. Wow, yeah. that's wonderful. My whole family do. Yeah. We, we, my mother wouldn't let us go out and play. We had to go to church. In the beginning, you know, when you're little, you oh, we got to go to church. Yeah. But as I got older and really yeah. realized yeah. what she was telling us, how yeah. grateful. He yeah, is. That's right. What he can do for you. Yeah. No, no. You gotta let him in first. That's right. And know what? Know what else too? We all were forsaken him. Yes. But you know, know what's so graceful about him? 
He never leaves us. That's right. Never will leave you or no, forsake you. No, he won't. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas is your name. No, just Nick. Nick? Well, let me pray for you, Nick, if you don't mind. Father, I thank you for yeah. Nick and what a light he is here at Central. I just pray you, I thank you for his life and give him a father that loves you, loved you, and now loves you and sees you. I pray you would bless him in his work. And Lord, thou, though he's not a preacher, he is a preacher. Yes, and he is doing your work, and I know you are preparing him for work that um, only he can do, that you're going to do through him. I bless him, Lord, and I just thank you for the encouragement that he is to me, and that you continually bless him. In the name of Jesus Christ, give him wisdom, give him strength, help him in all that he does in his life, especially as he's going to graduate soon. I bless him in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless Nick. I, I know about Jacob, all his kids. Yeah. Donna, his daughter. Yeah. When they were in Shekel. Yeah. How how they how the, the Shekel King, I mean Shekel King's son, mm -hmm. had to do Donna mm -hmm. and his brothers and them got all mad. So <clears throat> the Shekel King came to him and said, "We want to be part of y'all. Mm -hmm. What we have to do to be part of y'all?" He said, "Well." First of all, you gotta be clean, you gotta be circumcised. Mm -hmm. But what, what was the devil's thing that came out of that when they got circumcised? Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, 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 his son, Reuben, uh, Dan, mm -hmm. uh, God, Benjamin, yep. uh, Joseph. Well, Joseph was in, he was a baby then. Yeah, he, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he didn't go in. in, in yeah. <laughs> And Benjamin, they didn't go in there yeah. and tow up there and burn down the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jacob, no, right. and Jacob got mad at them. Yeah, yeah. Because he said, why you do that for? Yeah. Now you got a sin. Yeah. So they had to leave. They had to leave there. I, I know about Melchizedek. Mm-hmm. When he came out and blessed Abraham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Abraham told him, no, I don't want nothing. Yeah. I, I just want my nephew. Yep. You know, and he gave um, uh, Melchizedek, which was his uncle. Yeah. People don't know that. Oh, they, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was his uncle. Interesting. Yeah, great uncle. Okay. So, um, yeah, I learned something he, new. Just where the ten percent came. Okay. Um, and, yes. And, um, how his brother, how, how, how grateful Joseph was after his brother sold him into Egypt. Mm -hmm. And um, when they came, you know, when the family came, they came there. They didn't even recognize his own brother. I know it. <laughs> yeah. And. and he yeah. asked God, and just how merciful God is, to hold his mighty hand. Yeah. And he forgave his brother. Yeah. You know, and their brother told him that um but he only forgave him if he said, Now you go get Benjamin mm -hmm. and you bring Benjamin back here. Mm -hmm. Now y'all did something to Benjamin. I know sir. So they went and got Benjamin, brought Benjamin. Yeah, yeah. But but he he kept uh, who he kept? He kept one of the brothers. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, which one? I know. Judah, was it? Not Judah, the other one. The one that Threw him down in the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got his name. Yep. So he kept him. Yep. But treated him good and stuff yeah. like that. And mm -hmm. um, when they brought Benjamin back, then he told him, "Now go get my dad, cause I want him to mm -hmm. come here and join the family." Mm -hmm. After a few years, they went back. Some stayed. Yep. You know, like Moses and family. Yep. Um, they stayed. Yep. But um, the rest of them just went back and stuff like that. Nick. What a pleasure. God bless Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm going to listen to a little bit more than that, Mama God. No, that's fine. What's that? Oh, preach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Good. Tell me your name again. Gianna. Gianna, how's everything going? It's good. Good. I'm doing all right. Yeah. Just preaching the word. Praying for people. You're in midterms now. You, 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 you just like uh, uh, John the Baptist. Yeah. You, you, you. You're shouting in the wilderness. That's right. And people listen. You don't know what the Spirit of God will do. You yeah. just don't know. And that's the beautiful thing. You go out. I say it's like going out fishing. Yeah. Right? Or sowing seed, like the Bible says. Do you need any prayer for anything? Okay. What would you like prayer for? G How do you say your name again? Gianna. Gianna. Just in general. Okay. Father, I thank you for Gianna. I thank you for the privilege of seeing her again. I pray you would get, continue to give her wisdom and strength, Lord. I know that you will help her. I ask, Lord, that you would give her the help that she needs as the midterms are coming up. I also ask, Lord, that you would help her in her, in her inner heart, in her mind, to uh, flee from temptation that would come to her in whatever form that it would come, and that she would see the lie of Satan right away rather than indulging in things she should not indulge in. I just bless her, Lord, and I pray that you would continually fill her with your Holy Spirit and make her um, wise and make her bold and make her strong in the Lord. 
And may she continually look to Jesus Christ for her hope and her salvation. And I pray this in his name. Amen. Amen. Thank God you so much. God bless you. You're very welcome. God bless nice you. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you too. Really is. Yeah, it looks like everybody's headed off to class. I might, I might just stop right now. Okay, then. Yeah, cool. But you come every day? Uh, no, I've been, I'll come a couple times a week, maybe at least once a week. Okay. Yeah, yeah I went here years ago, you know. Oh, I, I hear you when you say yeah. that. I hear you when you yeah. that. Yeah, I, I listen very well. A little bit different. I think they had a road going down oh, straight did through here. Yeah, I mean, that was a long time ago. But it's, it hasn't changed that much, even in all those years. Well, it, 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 I, I like the school. They got some pretty good professors, you know. Yeah, they do. And, yeah. Uh, they got a good system and yeah. stuff like that. Um, yeah. You can get a good education. Yeah. That's, that's most important. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I will preach a little bit more. Let me look at what time it is. Yeah, I got one more second. All right. So, brothers, what I'm telling people is how you can be made right with God through Jesus Christ, right? That's the only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but by me. There's just no other way to get right with God, not through Islam, not through the King of Mahal, yeah. not through Mormonism, but only through Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed upon the cross. And what it means when Jesus Christ shed his blood, it means that he died in the place of sinners. He took the punishment that sinner, sinners deserve, that sin deserves upon himself. And when Jesus Christ did that, he made a way for us to be saved. For all those who call upon the name of the Lord, all those who look to Jesus Christ, the Bible says all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And you may not think this is important now, but I tell you what, my friends, it's going to happen someday where you will reach the end of your rope. Life is going to hit you hard. You don't know. It might be a divorce. It might be a death of somebody. It might be, you know, loss of your health. What will you do then? And I tell you, remember my words. Turn to God through Jesus Christ. Pray to God and get your life right with God through Jesus Christ and follow Him because Jesus Christ said to follow me. And to follow me, to follow Jesus Christ means to worship Him. It means also to trust in Him. It also means to obey Him. And that's a word that we don't like to hear now in, our, in the 21st century is obedience. But you see, we cannot obey God apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. The only way the Holy Spirit can dwell in us... Hey, you dropped something. The only way the Holy Spirit can dwell in you is that you are made right with God, justified, forgiven of your sin through what Jesus Christ has done upon the cross. And that's what the cross is all about. You see, people don't even know what the cross is about. People don't know what the cross is. The cross is the place where God has made for us to be forgiven because God himself, the Son of God, came into the world to die on the cross that everybody who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Amen. All right. The pledge, sir. God bless you. Pray hey, for me, too. I'm heading up to uh, Planned Parenthood. I'm going to preach in front of there and call people to uh, save babies. Doing his work. Thank you. You, too. Yes. God bless okay. you. I'll see you again. Okay.